I'm Jim Gehring from Brown Tool Options, and today I'd like to talk to you about plow planes. Plow planes are planes that are designed to cut a narrow groove parallel to the edge of a board. They're called plow planes because the cut that they make, the groove that they cut in the board, looks very much like the furrow that an uh, agricultural plow cuts in the earth. Um, this is a very early plow plane. It, uh, the main parts of it are, this is called the skate. You can see there's the cutter. This has got a fairly narrow one, looks like about an eighth inch or three sixteenths. This is the skate that makes the cut, cuts the groove. And this is the fence. And the fence runs along the side of the board while you're making the cut. And it's what you use to make sure that your cut is, is absolutely parallel and a fixed distance from the side of the board. Um, obviously, the real challenge in a plow plane is keeping this fence locked in place so that it's exactly parallel to the skate and remains the correct distance from the skate. So that, you know, because if it moves on you, then your cut is going to shoot off to one side and it's going to be a mess. So, this is the earliest type of plow that was made in the United States, even before it was the United States. It was made in the colonies. It's called a Yankee plow. And the method that they use to lock the skate in place, to lock the fence in place, so they can keep it the right distance from the skate, were these carved wooden thumb, thumb screws that tighten down on the arms. Um, and you can imagine, you know, over the years, you really have to force these things down to hold that fence in place. Um, they tended to, you can, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's grooves along the top of the arms here. Um, where they've been really tightened down and over the years they would tend to loosen. Um, you do sometimes find them with metal or even bone or ivory plates along the top, but usually they just use wood and go with what the Yankee plows are using. This particular one was made by a guy named Joseph Folk, who's a uh, man who was a very prominent plow maker who worked in Providence, Rhode Island in the, the end of the um, 18th century and the, at the very beginning of the 19th century. A big improvement made to the design of plow planes at the beginning of the 19th century was the development of the screw-on plow. It was a uh, credit to that for inventing that is usually given to a guy named Emmanuel Carpenter, a major plane maker from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who patented this design in 1838. Uh, this was called Carpenter's Improved Arm Plow Plane. And as you can see, Instead of the arms just sliding in and out, as in the Yankee plow, they're threaded. And you've got these two locking nuts on either side of the plane body, as well as these uh, knobs at the end for fine adjustment. So you would set your distance of your fence, get it exactly parallel, and then you lock these two nuts down, and that's going to hold it in place. You don't have the danger of it slipping as you do with the Yankee plow. Um, so that kind of solves the problem of slippage, but you still got the issue that uh, you've got to set these two arms separately and you've got to get it just exactly right to get the fence exactly parallel to the skate. The next uh, major development in the development of the uh, plow plane then was the three-arm plow. And this is a typical example of what's called a center wheel plow. There were some other makers, but the biggest makers were two companies in Ohio called Ohio Tool Company and Sandusky Tool Company that made this particular design with this uh, large adjusting center wheel in the middle arm, hence the term center wheel. It was, uh, there was a patent taken out on this by a guy named Harmon Van Buskirk, but there's considerable doubt as to whether he really invented it or he may have seen that the pattern was out there and jumped in and patented it real quick. But, uh, so most people do not give him actual credit but it was, as I said, mentioned, uh, manufactured by Ohio Tool and Sandusky. Um, and then as you can see, the outer arms are not threaded. Only the middle arm is threaded. It's got this uh, adjusting wheel so that when you move this in and out, these two arms move simultaneously and you only have to set it once. You don't have to set the front and rear arm independently. Um, this, by the way, is just an absolutely gorgeous plane. Uh, plow planes were also made out of the most exotic woods and were very decorative. This one is rosewood. And you just look at that uh, beautiful sapwood streak. This is, a, this is a number 110 Ohio Tool Company 
nice boxwood center wheel with the absolute gorgeous color. That was kind of the apotheosis of adjusting plow plane fences, but people did try to come up with some other kind of weirder designs. This is one of my personal favorites. This is known as the scissor arm plow. It was invented by a guy named Ellis Morris, who worked for Sandusky. And Sandusky, in addition to selling the center wheels, had also marketed this. You can see you've got the, this is a, a cast iron plane instead of a wood plane. As you can see, it's got these two arms that uh, cross in the middle, and you, that way, again, it works pretty well at keeping the fence exactly parallel to the skate. Um, but uh, there's a few of these around. There's a fair number. There's enough of them around that they're uncommon, but not genuinely rare. But they are they are definitely uncommon. It didn't sell as well as the uh, as the center wheel. Um, you will find some of these, by the way, with some very decorative floral decals on them. If you ever find one like that, grab it because those are very rare. The uh, that floral decaling almost always is completely normal. Though. You rarely find any with any traces of it. So yeah, that was. Uh, suggested as an alternative to the center wheel. The next one we come to, now this one is genuinely rare. I know of only two examples of this thing. This is uh, one that was invented by a guy named Samuel Piper in 1881. And as you can see, unlike the arms that slide in and out on that, these arms fold. And then you move your fence in like that, see? And then this, this piece here, this wing piece, you can lock down with this thread and that holds, with this uh, wing nut, that holds it in place. Um, thumb screws and that holds it in place. Um, but it's actually it's a pretty good, pretty good design. There's about the only thing really wrong with it is it kind of limits the length of your, your arms. These can go considerably wider, so this is limited by how much of the arm can fold down. But for whatever reason, this just never caught on. Um, as I said, I only know of two examples that exist doesn't look like it was ever widely manufactured. Now let's uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about a different profession, that of the coachmaker, the person, uh, the craftsman who would make horse-drawn coaches and carriages, and sometimes referred to as a carriage maker. Um, the thing about these coaches or carriages is that they tended to be very fancy with a lot of curved lines and surfaces. So the plow plane that was needed for those had to be able to follow curves. This is a coachmaker's plow. Um, it was made by a guy named John Sim, who was a very early English maker. The coachmaker's trade was, was more of an English trade than an American trade. Um, and you notice it is you know, typical to these uh, plow planes, except the skate, instead of going the entire length of the plane, is very short. It enables it to follow more complex curves. And of course, the fence itself is not only curved, but it's got these, uh, this adjustable plate here so that you can set it for curves of different diameters. So uh, this, is a, uh, this, is a, this is a very rare plow plane. Um, I'm, I'm aware of only one other example that exists in the world. The other thing is that uh, as I think I mentioned, in the United States, we tended to use those wooden thumb screws before the invention of the center of the uh, screw arm plane to lock down the arms. In uh, England, they were more inclined to use wedges. So you can see this is what's called a wedge arm plow. Instead of having a thumb screw to lock those arms down, you've got these uh, boxwood wedges that serve the same purpose of locking in place. And finally, this is also a coachmaker's plow. Looks completely different than the ones we've been looking at, but it serves the same function. You've got a very short skate, so it can follow very sharp curves. And the fence, instead of running the full length of the plane, is just this little short brass piece here that slides in and out. So this particular coachmaker's plow could follow very sharp curves and turns in the, in the body of the coach. Um, instead of having a more typical you know, plain coat, it's got this rabbit tail. So this is also a coachmaker's plow of a different design. This uh, design was more used on the continent than in England or the United States. This was probably a German thing. Anyhow, all of these planes are going to be available at our uh, April 1st auction in York, Pennsylvania, and we hope to see you there.